And I do believe it says we're now live. Hey there, welcome to another lunchtime, at least here on the East Coast edition of HLS or Microsoft's Healthcare and Life Sciences webcast. I'm your host, Michael Gennady, and we've got a lot we're going to cover today. Uh, just a couple of quick things, though, before we get started. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, you know, we had last week a lot of Microsoft personnel were out west for training. I know they're just getting back. I know lots of folks have been keeping up with all the latest events. It was Microsoft Inspire for Partners, which recently took place. We're looking forward to Ignite. All kinds of great stuff, but you're going to be seeing more and more of these webcasts that are going to be based on you, the customer, uh, your request, what you'd like to see. In fact, I'll be posting later this week a survey to start lining up some of the next upcoming events. Uh, I'm broadcasting, as you can see today, out of my house, uh, so it's going to be fun. And uh, we have our LinkedIn cup. So if you are, are not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, just a couple of logistics uh, on my end, and then we're going to jump right into it. So uh, you'll see I have a, a PC here, so you may see me looking down from time to time. So let's put on the collaboration hat. There you go. It hides the shine because I am uh, shiny. So uh, we'll have that up. I also have a, a larger screen here where a lot of my content will be. So you'll see me, you know, kind of going back and forth between looking at you and looking over here. And then once in a while, I'll be looking in Microsoft Teams, which is what we're using to broadcast this. This is a Microsoft Teams live event. And so you'll see that as well appearing here. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump right into today's presentation. And there we go. We have sent. So we're looking at my large screen here. And let's bring up our, oh, our presentation. And we want to project that. And one last. So I can still see my controls. There we go. So today's broadcast is on providing integrated training and knowledge checks within Microsoft Teams and more step by step. This all goes back and is related to my last uh, two webcasts I did. If you remember, or if you haven't, you should check them out on our site. We did a couple of webcasts where I covered building an end-to-end -end solution integrating uh, various services like Microsoft's uh, SharePoint, leveraging Teams to, for management, Stream for video delivery, and more to pull together an end-to-end -end integrated learning solution to help your users as you're onboarding them with Office 365, as Office 365 and Microsoft 365 deliver additional features, functions, and services. Um, we wanted to provide a way to show users how they could actually leverage all that uh, and be able to go ahead and integrate and present custom content along with Microsoft provided content. One of the outflows of that was we had some questions around, look, this is great. We can create custom training videos and other things, but how do we go ahead? We know this is not an LMS or learning management system. We already have one of those for, you know, for compliance, education, and training. But in this type of a scenario, how can we go ahead and provide ad hoc training, uh, training that we're integrating into this learning pathway solution, and then do things like knowledge check, maybe have a quiz to see, did they master the skills necessary do they need to go back and review and retake that quiz? Do we want to survey folks to find out coming out of that, what are some of their takeaways or things from as an organization we might want to work on? So that's the impetus for today. We're going to take a look at that and we're going to go step by step. We do have a couple of other uh, housekeeping items. So we're going to go ahead and click through our PowerPoint. Uh, again, this event is brought to you by the Microsoft Healthcare and Life Sciences Group. You can visit us at any time at aka.ms slash HLS blog. That's aka.ms slash HLS blog. Be sure to check out all the posts we have there. Uh, we had one that went hot that I posted on Friday, and there's a brand new one by Shelly Avery. You're going to want to check out 
if you're leveraging Microsoft Teams. Um, as always, video is being brought to us by Logitech Meetup. So I have a Logitech Meetup camera, just like the one you're seeing there. It's on the other side of my desk right there, pointing at you. And uh, it's an all-in-one huddle room solution. It's great for coming in, provides great video. It has 4K sensors, 5X zoom. It can do auto follow. We can do things like zoom in and zoom out, right? Um, got a remote there. It has its own microphone solution here. Uh, it's a great solution and it is a part of the Logitech family for providing these kind of things. So I want to just thank again Logitech. Uh, they let us use this particular camera and they have some great solutions covering everything from a, a scenario like this where it could be, you know, an executive broadcasting at his desk or her, her desk, um, but sitting at their desk and doing a broadcast solution all the way up to the rally cam solutions for auditorium style seating. All right. Last housekeeping here because, and I see we need to do it because it's a rather quiet. So um, before we start, a couple of things. Number one, I encourage you, if you have questions, ask. In fact, let me see something. Did we not have Q&A? Show the conversations. Meeting notes. So we have here, um, I believe, oh boy, did I not enable? I might not have enabled Q&A. That would be a remiss, a, a issue on my part. Um, I apologize if I did not. Uh, you can find me just so anybody wants to know. I'll keep my phone available. Boy, I apologize around that. I did not enable Q&A, um, which happens once in a while when you're doing things solo and running solo here. So I do have a Twitter handle if anybody wants to chat me on Twitter and ask me uh, questions, etc. cetera. But, um, if you look for Janati, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, that's Janati, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I. Um, it doesn't look like we have the Q&A panel. So if you go to Twitter uh, in a separate browser window, you can tweet me questions and post to me. And I do apologize. So um, I can't tell unless I hit the broadcast from my phone um, whether I've enabled that or not. Usually I have multiple folks in here handling things and today I am solo. So I, I do apologize if that's not showing, but I do would love to hear where you're uh, watching from. If you do have questions, again, if you go to Twitter, Janati, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, I can certainly hit those up there and take a look at that uh, particular piece. You know, you can post your questions and we'll get on with it. All right, moving on. This is just showing how you can do Q&A, which it appears I do not have enabled. I'm gonna check one last thing. I don't think I can edit this once we have begun, which would be nice, but I don't believe I can. So let me see. Wow, let's see if I click meetings, it's not gonna kill this. I should still be broadcasting, there we go. I should still be able to hit here. I'm gonna try edit. It says we can no longer edit because we are live. So I really do apologize. Wow. All right. And here we go. Okay, so we're back in. And I apologize for that mix up. All right. So Janati, if you want to post me questions, again, I apologize. Let's get on. We've got a lot to cover today for today's presentation. So Today really focuses on the following. Um, we're going to cover quickly the, the challenge that people are facing, you know, around putting out knowledge, custom videos, things that might come from a company like Microsoft, et cetera. Then we're going to take a look at the following. We're going to look at a solution around doing that in some step-by-step -step builds. And I'm going to walk you through those. I have created standalone documentation 
that you can leverage for this, that you can pull up um, and you'll be able to go ahead and create everything I did step by step. I'll have the links afterwards in the recorded post. We'll put that up. But uh, the first one that we're going to cover is putting in Microsoft Forms. A lot of this hinges off of forms where we can create quizzes and surveys quickly on the fly. We're going to take a look at how you can embed a form directly into a video for broadcasting. So when it comes to the point where people should be actually filling something out, where you might even want to have, you know, different checkpoints with different little mini quizzes taking place, you can absolutely do that. And it's simple. So I'm going to show you how that works. Then we're going to take a look at using Microsoft Forms in PowerPoint. If you're not familiar with it, you should be, and I'll show you. PowerPoint recording is a great feature to create video content native in PowerPoint. Publish it to stream. You will see the Forms piece there. But I'm going to show you what it can and cannot do from that point of view, at least right now. And we'll discuss that and quickly run through that. Then we're going to take a look at integrating a form or survey uh, directly into a web page, right? So we went through the Learning Pathways solution and with modern web and these modern web pages. I'm going to show you how you can quickly layer in both a video and a form for a quiz, survey, knowledge check, whatever it is you want to do there. We'll take a look at that. We're going to then go one step further. Maybe you want to do a live broadcast internally and you don't want necessarily free form discussion, but you do want to facilitate, again, quizzing, surveying, uh, that type of activity. So how you can layer that into the live event and have people, you know, you can direct them, you could direct them to a particular question at a particular time or just refer to the surveyor or quiz uh, and have people fill that out. Once we've done that, the big goal is, look, we're in Microsoft Teams and Teams is hot. Everybody's looking at Teams. You want to bring learning, not just where you can go to it, but now let's bring that learning to your folks where they work. Teams, right? Teams, 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 Teams. So we're going to take a look at how you can take a look at with Microsoft Teams, actually go in with Teams, um, and then be able to pull that kind of content natively, provide it dynamically to your users right there. <clears throat> we'll take a look also at uh, integrating with the learning pathways. That's going to be pretty quick. We covered that in the last session. I'm just going to kind of reference and show a little. And then I have a little extra. Maybe there's external content you want to wrap in quickly, right? Uh, and do it right within a form or quiz, which again, you can put in directly in. We'll talk about directly into Teams directly into a web page or reference the form directly itself. So we'll have that. We're going to cover all that and more. I said live open Q&A. I really do apologize uh, that I was remiss. Wait a minute, it's showing now. Where is it? No, it's not. Um, I did not click the checkbox and uh, I apologize for that. So I'm, gonna, I'm done apologizing. We're going to move on. We got a lot to cover. So first of all, the challenge, verifying knowledge mastery. This is key, right? In many cases, we can create very rich content that we produce to users. So I showed in the last one, last webcast we did, and I show customers all the time how they can take Microsoft PowerPoint today and create very rich content on the fly. Maybe you need to show a business process and instead of documenting it, taking hours, I can take five minutes walk through and show and explain how to do something and as quick as i'm done bam that content is live and it's in a format that users are more likely to gravitate towards right it's more usable but in many cases just presenting them information and knowledge it's not enough we need to be able to verify that in fact the folks not only watched it but that they have mastered the content. You know, at Microsoft, we have all kinds of compliance pieces and it is handled by our learning management system or LMS. And in most cases, organizations have that in place. Many don't though, right? And so, and even if not, maybe it's something like, let's say, for example, I work with healthcare and life sciences. Let's say you've created something around the new protocols for hand washing, right? A new a video around hand washing. 
And there's a number of things, steps, and considerations that come into that play for sanitation of the hands as we go through and do our work during the day, right? Because we're engaging with clients. Well, you want to make sure they've mastered and understood everything that came about. So how do we go about doing that? The way that we handle this is really being able to pair video, right? Again, a medium that people want, that they can consume. They can consume anywhere, anytime, any place on their little device, et cetera. And then we want to pair it up with some questioning surveying capabilities to be able to see that they did and then to be able to report on that, right? That's a biggie, that's important. So that's where our solutions are gonna come in. So today we're gonna to build out the following. First of all, we're gonna take a look at integrating a Microsoft form or quiz directly into a Microsoft Stream video. We're gonna follow that up, taking it one step further. Um, we're gonna look at how we can create video in PowerPoint and how there is a form capability, but what the limitations of that are. You might still wanna use the form that you see in the record uh, capability, and I'll talk about how and why that work, how that could work. Um, next is around, again, then taking that to another level. Maybe you wanna integrate it into a centralized place, into a web page, modern web page, like the Learning Pathways solution that we had uh, and be able to bubble that up. Then we want to take a look at how we can do live events. I already mentioned that. Um, I talked about how we'll look at the uh, integrating it into a collaborative workspace, Microsoft Teams, bring it to where they're working, bring the stuff into learning pathways, and then that video piece. So let's get out of this view. And there you can see me and my two little shark friends and my shark selfie. And we are going to use our demo place to actually showcase this. Just for the heck of it, in case there are any questions, I am pulling up. I mentioned, uh, are you set as producer and presenter in the live event settings? I am, I'm set up as all. The issue is, so that Kelly uh, is asking me that. Thank you, again, if you wanna ping questions since I was remiss in my setup, I did not put uh, having live Q&A, didn't check that. I couldn't go in and change that. We have live settings, my live captions. I don't know. There's nowhere that I know of that I can go and change. Yeah, I can't, I cannot edit the initial settings for this. So once you've kind of set up your broadcast to run, Kelly, that's it is what it is. Um, so double checking. Uh, but she asked if I'm set up. Yes, I'm set up as everything right here in my house. Um, so we'll move on. But if you want to find me on Twitter to ask questions, to shout out, it's G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, Gennady, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I. Look for me on Twitter. I'll be keeping my phone on the ready for Q&A and for shout outs. So jumping into embedding. So the first area that we want to take a look at is actually putting a quiz right in line with a video. And that's easy to do. So first, let's take a look at the first element. And that is Microsoft Forms. And here is Forms. If you have Office 365, you've got Forms. If you don't see it, IT hasn't turned it on. So you might want to talk about getting that enabled. Um, but Forms is a great capability. It is fully compliant for those uh, folks who are um, in regulated industries, like I work again with healthcare and life sciences. So you know, I might wanna check on that, but all the data is within your own tenant. It's all stored there. Um, a lot of stuff around that, but it is fully part of our uh, compliance solution within Office 365, but it enables you to do some very simple things. So for example, here is a knowledge check survey that I created. And here you can see the questions. Um, that I created. I just did two very simple true and false uh, ones. We're going to use this one in just a little bit. If I come back here to create a new quiz or survey, it's as easy as picking either a form or something like a survey or quiz, right? Where we want to ask questions. So let's say we want to you know, start a quiz. This is how simple it is to get started. And I'm not going to spend much time, uh, but you're going to go ahead, give it a title. Right, 
You can give it a description. Notice this media element. Keep that in the back of your head for the very end. Um, so I can add an image here, right? I can give a description around this, and then I can start adding questions. So we have here choices, we have text, ratings, dates. If I click the drop down, you can see here I have rankings, um, net promoter score. We can do various sections. We even, if we come over here, um, and we don't, I haven't added a question, so let's add one. We're going to say this is, uh, do you like quizzes? And we'll go ahead and it has suggestions based off of that. Whoops, and I should put a question mark at the end. Um, I'll say yes. And maybe, <laughs> could have said no. You can do multiple answers, right? A number of things we can do. You can see here we can do it as drop down. We can also select maths and subtitles to add. Uh, we even have uh, within these uh, different areas the ability to create some additional content. We can add options around that. And we can add more options for choices for people to pick. We can check what a, a, a right answer is by simply coming up here and selecting correct answer so it'll actually grade them on that. So we have a lot of things that we can do and to guide people through you know, a quiz, right? To create those. But we've already created one that we're gonna reuse. The idea though is to take now a quiz that we have and we wanna inlay it right within a video. And where do we do videos? Well, last time we talked about using Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream is the place for doing corporate video, for enabling that, putting that out there. Uh, content. And so you can see here, you know, we have some different content that's posted, different sections. And in our case, what we want to do is add a quiz. So I'm going to go to show you how we can do this. I'm going to go to my videos. And that's not where I wanted to go. Let's go to all videos because I'm added as a person. So here is this one health MDT, right? Health MDT. And so for this particular one, I want to, at the conclusion of it, quiz them using my form here, my quiz that I've created. Because once we create this, right, and people come in and they could say, uh, you learn, let me go ahead and we'll preview it. There we go. So you learn how to track high patient, you know, high risk patient care. And I'll say true. Uh, and it provides a single pain. I'll say true. And I'm going to submit. Boom, thanks for the response. Here, the user can view the results. I got 100%. Or if we go back to here, we start tracking them and we get a, a nice graphical view. We can go into the details and we can export all the stuff around that, right? So knowledge check, we're tracking who's done what, what they've said, and we're getting those responses around that. Um, but we want to inlay this to this video. The way to do it, it's pretty simple. We're going to come in here. In this case, I'm going to click Health MDT. And I'm going to pause it. We don't need to listen to all that. But notice at the top, because I am an owner now, I'm not the creator of this video. I'm an owner. This pops up when it shows as owners. So you see the transcript piece. I didn't enable. We don't have transcript enabled here on this one, but we have this uh, additional tab called interactivity. When I click that, it says add a form. So what this is gonna allow us to do is add a form. So I'm gonna click add a form. Um, we're gonna go ahead and grab the form URL. So let's come on back here to this one and I'm gonna click share, which gives me the URL so I can quickly copy that. We're gonna go ahead, paste that uh, URL right in here. We can give a name of it and I'm going to say MDT 101 quiz. There we go. Give it a name. Now it asks for position on the timeline. This is easy. So what I can do now is start to drag. Notice as I drag, the timing here is changing. The timing in the video down in that portion automatically changes. We simply have to drag or play the video till we're at the point that we want. I wanna bring this out here to the end. 
right? So I'm going to say I want it there. Click Add to Timeline. And it's now added that. So what does that look like from a user experience? Well, let's go ahead. I'm going to refresh. We'll pull up our little video here. We'll let it start and play. I'm going to skip ahead. Get it near the end. So we're just about there. It's playing through, playing through. And look at what it's done. It's now loading the form into the video itself. My Oh, I had it so it only does one response per team. There we go. So let's go ahead. We're going to change that. Um, come back to our questions. And for this particular one, Let's look at, oh, we could do branching on the settings. Uh, only people accept responses. One response per person. Let's uncheck that. There we go. So now we can redo that. There's our video. All right, we'll let it start playing again. Let's skip to near the end going to pull it up. I'm going to point out a couple of things as it pulls up our video here, right? So number one, all right, here we go. It's rendering the video, but notice this little box. It says continue to video. That's important. You may want to quiz people, you know, in the middle. You might want to um, add, right? So I have interactivity. You could add additional forms. Think about that now. I can pop, I can pop forms, multiple tests, throughout. Maybe it's a lengthy video. Maybe it's a one hour uh, presentation. And so I want to track them as they go through. So I have checkpoints of knowledge mastery and check. I can simply create quizzes, po post them to that point in the timeline and go ahead and run that knowledge check. But here we go. Here's our particular video. So I can go ahead. This time I'll say true for this one. I'll say false for this. I'm going to say submit. And it's going to submit my answer right in line. I'm in a browser view and it's doing this and it's, you know, giving me all this. There we go. Thanks. So I can view the results. It'll allow me, since I changed that option, to take a look. But if we come back here now, you can see we have two responses. And here you can see where we're tracking and showing what's going on. We can also look at the details, who the people were, what they did. Um, we have some other options that we can look at that. We see average time to complete, all kinds of great info. So we've now created this form. We have a quiz. We've inlined it directly into our video. So people have a one-stop shop. Wherever I render this video, keep this in mind, wherever that video is rendered, whether in a web page or whether in Microsoft Teams, that, that quiz is going to come along with it because it's right in line. All right, so that's the first method of doing that. I'm gonna quickly check again. If you have questions, you can pop me on Twitter, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I. Um, Forms is fully compliant. However, it is not the last time I checked. It does have administrative, ah, so uh, Victoria. So yeah, you may wanna check again. So we actually have in the Microsoft Trust Center, some of that had to do with how the data was stored and being encrypted or not encrypted and some of the other pieces around that. Um, but for example, for HIPAA compliancy, we're fully HIPAA compliant. If you're doing forms, we can control, number one, from an administrative standpoint, whether or not they can share forms internally, externally, what, what's being done around that. Number two, um, we do now, it used, when it was originally launched, it was an external service, right? It was done for teachers originally. They brought that in. There was some time of transition. Same thing happened with Sway and a couple of the other pieces that originally started as uh, not germane to uh, Office 365 for enterprise. Uh, but yeah, so if you go in, you'll see that under and it shows the level of compliance and what we have there. So take a look. Um, any PS commandlets? Well, not that I'm aware of today. So I do want to say that there are things coming out, though. There is the new uh, Forms Pro that has just been released. For some reason, I don't have access to it yet. I had access to the preview. I don't to the Pro yet. Go figure. So there will be more coming around that. Um, but the basic uh, Forms um, 
it, it does fall under our uh, compliancy. All right, next. Uh, I didn't know we could do both roles, so thank you for that. Oh yeah, Kelly, so yeah, if you're a uh, setup, if you set yourself up as a producer, then you're a presenter, producer, the whole bit. You can do everything. Um, so keep that in mind, that's for broadcasting. All right, so quick refreshing. Thanks, I'll check it out, cool. And I I'll try to remember, if not, ping me. Okay, you got my thing on Twitter. Ping me, um, and I'll make sure with the recording of this that I put up a link to the Trust Center so you can see where this falls in that. All right, moving on. So we've done inline now into a video. The next step is, hey, what about a modern web page? So we're gonna, for ours, come in here, and I've got, here's my learning pathway solution that we created in our last webcast, right? So we've got this fully integrated scenario for teams and stream and all that stuff. What I'm gonna do is I wanna create, in this case, a new page. And I'm gonna pay, oh, I don't know, let's create a, uh, actually cancel, I'm gonna go out of there. Where did I do it last time? I did it from here, add a page. That's what I want to do. All right. So we're going to call this MD, whoop, MDT 101. So our same video, we want to layer that in. And of course, just like I showed last time, we can give background images. We can do recent ones, web searches, et cetera. Let's pick something. Oh, we'll pick this picture here. There we go. And uh, oh. Not that, um, there we go. So, and then we can go ahead and position that however we'd like. And what we want to do is layer in now both the video and the quiz into a web page, right? Because a lot of folks, again, like to, if you're going to create something like Learning Pathways, I'm going to show you how to put it in the page, then we can call it as an asset in a playlist later, right? So what we're going to do, we're creating the page, this original, asset so we're going to come in and what we're going to do is expand we could search or expand i have the directions in the uh, document i'll put out and what we want to do now is layer in that video so i'm going to go to click see now under text media and content you'll notice microsoft stream is there when we select stream it's going to go out it's grabbing all of uh, a whole channel here right what we want to do let's close that Let's click the edit. I don't want for a source all a stream. I want a single video. Once we do that, it's asking for the address so we can come again back to our video. Let's select share. There it is. I could stipulate a start time. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to click copy and close. Come on back here. Let's paste that in. It's automatically going to go out, render a view. And again, I could change the start time or whatever. I think we're good. We'll go ahead and just close that, publish this page. And I don't want to copy or do any of that. So there we go. So now we have a video. But now we want to put that form in. Again, it's the same thing. This is easy, folks, right? None of this should take programmers. It doesn't take uh, web developers to do your communications, your training folk can do this very simply. So for the same page, I'm gonna click edit. There we go. And I could create a new section with different content, but in this one, this case, I simply wanna add a new web part. So I'm gonna come straight underneath here, say add a new web part to column one. We'll do that again. I'm gonna again, expand this view and notice we have a direct thing for Microsoft Forms, All right? So we've gone ahead. It says, do we want to create, if we want a new form, it'll actually walk us through creating a form right here if we didn't already have one. So again, trying to simplify that, make it a very streamlined process or add an existing form. In this case, it wants that address. We're going to come back here to our form, copy that, come back just like we did <clears throat> earlier. It's a, and we want it to collect result, collect responses, right? We could show form results. Now, why would you want to do that? You may have a page that only 
is for the trainers, right? And you may even show multiple form results so that they can have almost like a dashboard of quizzes and, and get a quick view of that. But we want to collect the responses, so I'm going to click OK. You can see it's loading. We'll go ahead, republish. And there we are. That's it. It was that simple. I can do this anywhere where there's SharePoint. Anywhere, right? So, um, you know, if I wanted to create, and then we'll come back to that in a moment, maybe it's in the underlying SharePoint of my Microsoft team. I could create a page there just like I did here and display that page. But in this case, we have, there's our video, there's our knowledge check. They watch the video, they respond, and just like that, we're now accumulating more results. Again, simple. So let me quick see if we have any questions before we move on to the next step. Nope. Again, if you have questions <coughs> because of my mistake today, hit me up on Twitter at G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, it's Gennady. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'll see your questions and be able to respond to them uh, right from here. So, all right, moving on. So we've taken a look now how to put a video, a, que a quiz in line to a video. We've seen how we can take a, a video and uh, then inline both the video and the form into a web page. But what about live content? What about those things like where you want to engage employees? Perhaps you're rolling out a new feature to Office 365, or if you're a hospital, you're now rolling out Epic or Cerner or your, you know, whatever organization, financial services, rolling out ASAP, whoever you are, you're rolling out new systems and you want to do a broad scale training. Um, perhaps you're an executive and you want to do some, you know, polling of the organization around uh, directions and things that you're doing. How do we do that? How do we take a form, be it a quiz or a, you know, survey type piece and then combine that with a live video. Well, first off, we cannot take the video and put it, um, excuse me, we cannot take the quiz and insert it into the live video. We could show it, but it won't be interactive. So we might want to flash a view of it, but we ultimately want to people, point people to it. So what we need to do is place that in, the, in a web page itself. So I'm going to come back here to, again, to our learning pathways. And I'm gonna create another page, add a page, and we'll call this um, live learning pathways training, there we go. And so again, I could put in a picture if I want. Let's go ahead and we're gonna put one up in our piece here. I am gonna upload a picture from my picture library because I already know what the video is gonna be here. There we go, add the image. So again, I can drag that around how I'd like that. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna click this same option here. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna go to text media I'm going to go to stream and I want a single video, but now I'm going to come back to stream and I'm going to go to my content and videos and I have set up a video, which is welcome to the learning pathway, All right? If I click on this and I can, you know, take a look here, um, this is going to allow me to add interactivity after it's gone live. All right, so let's go in here and click update the details. And notice it brought me to the live events page for this video delivery, All right? So here I have all that uh, where we were setting that up. And one of the things that we would like to do here is to share. And it gives a URL just like the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy. And when I copy that, I can paste that in just like I would an on-demand video. 
and it's going to layer and it's going to show in this case, right? It's got that um, image thumbnail that I did of myself and drop that in. And so we're going to get that here. Uh, but when it goes live, it'll just start to play. So a person can come to this web page again. If I publish it, you'll see right now there's just this view. There's nothing to do here, right? But when it goes live, it'll start playing. There'll be a video that'll actually start presenting itself as I talk to the people. So I could be, again, an executive engaging employees. I could be trainers doing things. But now I want to you know, put that uh, form in. And again, just like before, we're just, for the sake of time, going to leverage that same one. You'd want to create a second one. I'm going to go ahead and say, add a uh, form. And where is it? There's forms and add an existing form. Actually, let's do this. We are going to create one. I'm going to say create a new form. Let's give it the name we want. And I'll call this Learning Pathways Survey. There you go. We're getting a little something different. I'm going to click Create. It's now going to, it's embedding it over in the other view. But what it's now doing for me is it brought me here to create and now I can start creating and I could say, you know, what is the number one training need you see in our org today? There we go. Something simple, right? So I can go ahead and add, you know, a question. I can say it's a long answer to give people and I can also make it required. And again, I can go and add questions, et cetera. The beauty of this is, it's now, let's just say collect response. I'm gonna say, okay. The beauty of it is as I create that quiz, look at now it's dynamically showing. So then people will be able to come in. I'll build this all out. And then on the day of the broadcast, when I send people to this page to watch, I can refer to the quiz below or the survey, have them fill out as we go. I can even reference other que you know, specific questions and things that I want to check. So we're checking our Q&A. Nobody's asking anything else. All right. Again, if you have questions, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, Janati, at, over on Twitter. I'm sorry. So find me, Janati, at Twitter. Um, so that's it. So now look at what we've been able to create. We've Showing how you could take a video, put a quiz directly in it. We've shown how you can create an on-demand piece of content, insert a quiz or a survey right on a web page. So we have a single cohesive entity for that. We've also seen how you can switch out a regular on-demand video and even do it with live video in a web page. The next step, and one that I skipped over, is this. So I'm going to pull up. Let's pull a PowerPoint. And as soon as that opens, I'm going to open a blank. I'm going to slide that on over so we can all see it. And as we look at our PowerPoint, as I mentioned, we have the recording tab. And I showed this last time. The recording tab allows us to record a slideshow, to do screen recordings like Camtasia and other solutions where you record what's happening as quick as I can walk and talk through something and it drops it into a slide. But one of the other options we have here is a form. So let me, I'm gonna add a blank slide and come back here to recording. And you'll notice I can click forms and it's gonna write in line against it. It's going to bring up, it's, it's going out and querying, right? So there we go. So I can look at, these are all other forms. This, this is under my corporate. ID, so you see a lot more showing up. But I can create new ones, forms or quizzes. Right from here, I can initiate that. And you're thinking to yourself, beautiful, so I'm gonna create the video. Uh, I'll just have this as a part of it and it'll turn into a form. Eh, it will not. Um, it'll just show you the form in the video. It won't actually use HTML5 to switch out from video to form and then back. It'll uh, actually just be a, a video view of it. So it's not interactive. It's consumption where you could talk about a form. That's not what we want. 
there is an option. See where it says save as show, where you create kind of a kiosk view. And this is where I think about, again, uh, in my uh, vertical space with healthcare and life sciences, this being, a, a, although it's not what we typically would think of with teams and others, a very viable solution. So for example, you may want to have a show view on a little kiosk where you're going to say for this week, we're going to run, you'll have a, a, a system that a laptop, whatever, that nurses can walk over to, for example. And it could be around the new hand sanitizer. Maybe they've got in some crazy machine that does ultraviolet x-ray, kills everything by taking your hands and turning them underneath whatever the case might be. It could be a manufacturing floor where, you know, for a pharmaceutical or for anybody manufacturing widget X or, you know, drug XLY or whatever, where they're going to, again, create a training piece. So you can create an interactive training in PowerPoint proper, insert the form and save as show. In that case, it'll appear kiosk view. Think of this, kiosk view on a PC where people go, they lock, they sign, their, they type in their name or whatever, uh, and you go ahead and get everybody run through the training. Um, but you need to save that as a show, not as a video. So I just wanted to highlight that. I know some people will try to create videos from here and publish it. This is really around creating a show. So the short answer, and I put it in my documentation is, is it there? Yes, can you save it as a video? The short answer is no, so there's no how to. But if you did want to add it into a show, you could do so using that inline capability. All right, moving on and to where I think is important. Save changes to your file. No, there we go, get that out of the way. So for me, um, you know, we've gone ahead, let's dismiss all that, close that, republish and close that. It's great that we're creating content and quizzes. That's all beautiful. But how do we get it to where people are? Well, there's really two paths we can take. One is we can bring it to where they're at, to where they're working, Microsoft Teams. That's what we're gonna cover first. The second is that we can bring it, we've created these here right in Learning Pathways, right? So, um, We've done that here, but they're not exposed through any of these training modules, right? Where I can come in and see all this Office 365 training, like uh, employee privacy and other things. So um, we're going to take a look at, we'll take a look at how we can inlay it to there. But the first way that I wanted to cover was this. So Microsoft Teams is where people work. And I'm just refreshing my phone to see if anybody's posting any more questions on Twitter. Nope. All right. <clears throat> Microsoft Teams is where people work. It's your single pane of glass. Teams provides a great mechanism for extending any given team with this add a tab function. With add a tab, we can do, we can do some wonderful things. So number one, let's go ahead. I'm going to say this is for, uh, oh, we got high risk patient care training, right? So what we want to do is layer in our MDT training. The first way that we can do so is by clicking add a tab. When it opens, notice one of the options is Microsoft Stream. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it allows me to add a channel or a tab name or a, and it's tab name, I'm sorry, or a direct video. So I can do a channel. Maybe I'm going to do a series of interact, interactive videos and it's part of a channel that I want to expose here. I can do that. But we created one video with a layered in um, quiz. So we're going to select video here. And it says I can search. If when I search, there we go. So I just started typing, or I could have gotten again that URL, pasted it, and it would have uh, validated that. It's automatically named it to what I want. I'm going to call it Health MDT Video and Quiz. Now that's going to get truncated just because it's long. 
Um, I could post it automatically. It's going to say post to the channel about this tab. It'll alert users that we've done this. I'm going to click save. And there we go. There is our video. Again, I come in, I click the video. We start to watch it. You know, we get all the way out here to the end. The video is going to run its course. It's then going to render right within Teams. It's going to render our form. Um, if I had multiples of these, I'd finish one, click continue to video, and it's going to allow me to come in and then submit. And so now all the members of this Microsoft team, and we can have up to 5,000 members in a team. Team can be very large, right? So organizational units, think of that. It could be a hospital, it could be a ward, um, it could be in manufacturing or health, it could be research and development, whatever the case might be. The members of that team where appropriate could go in, they could fill it out, they could view their results. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> and I got them both wrong. I got 0%, I'm not too good. But again, we're tracking all that on the back end so that as the folks are answering those, again, we get a graphical view. Um, I can post those scores out. I can grab it in Excel. Now that we've got a few more, we'll go ahead and open that up just so you can see what that looks like. And it still opened it over here. There we go. So now we're tracking that. And all the things you think about with reporting with Excel, it's all being captured. It's capturing the name of them, when they did that, right? The completion time it took, start time, um, and then their queue and their questions. And now we can do all kinds of rich reporting, right? On this particular piece. So we've now brought that video. So we took a video where we embedded here in stream, remember, we went ahead and we took this video, MDT, we embedded from here, I'm gonna click pause. We use interactivity to embed the quiz and now we've brought it to where the people work right in Microsoft Teams, right? And it even as we added it, it alerted the whole team in this channel, hey, they've added that quiz and people could click right here and go to it. So number of ways to skin the cat. But what about the other ones? What about the live video, for example, with a uh, Q&A or the on-demand? Again, it's the same concept, but we're gonna add it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna click add a tab. And what I'm going to do in this case, I'm gonna come back here to our learning pathways piece that we did. Oops, actually, I want to grab that live one. Go back there, learning pathways. So here is the URL to this. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to select website. Now, some people might say, why not SharePoint? Because when I go to add a page, it's looking in the one that underlies, not a centralized. But you'll see how what a nice job it does. So I'm going to click website and I'm going to call this MDT, oh no, this was Learning Pathways. Learning Pathways, Webcast, there we go. So I wanna bring that in here, I'm going to click. Again, now my users can go, I wanna do it wherever, I'm gonna click Save and watch what it's gonna do. It layers it in, it understood the, con it understood the construct of SharePoint, I didn't get all that other stuff up at the top, right? All the other navigation and all that. It put that page in nice and clean for me. It understood it was SharePoint, knew it was, you know, just out there in our environment. It's inlaid it again with the portion that'll start the live video. My um, survey is here, so I can go ahead and answer and submit right from here. Now I've brought that in and again, brought it to where people work. So if there's questions on Twitter, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, G-A-N-N-O-T-T-I, that's Gennady, I'm gonna quick check. No questions, people are quiet, but we're keeping uh, the same amount of attendees, so that's good. All right, so now what we've done, we've gone and we've, we added 
video in, uh, excuse me, a form for quizzes or surveys in line in a video. We've brought both of them uh, on demand video and a form into a web page. We brought a live video and a form into a web page. We saw how we can bring directly the video within live video right into Teams and right where we work. And we saw how we can bring in a video, be it live or on demand, with that in a modern web page as a clean view into Teams as well. Both very simple. Two last things. We're going to take a look at how to surface the content we've made, surface it in Learning Pathways for training in that centralized portal, right? Doesn't Does not negate what we've done in Teams because as a team member or somebody who moderates and does that team, maybe I just want to make it easy. You don't even have to go out there. But we also want to have it sent, you know, surfaced in our centralized piece in Learning Pathways. So we're going to take a look at that. Then we're going to take a look at leveraging an external video like YouTube content um, with quizzes because it can be done. All right. So we're going to go back to our Learning Pathways. And let's go back to the home page. And since I am administrator, we're going to go to the administrative view. Excuse me. And it's going to load that up. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this piece right here because we did cover it in the last webcast series. But very quickly, just to you know, kind of refresh people, you can do things right from here where you go ahead and create, for example, um, where you can create subcategories like here under getting started, I created one called employee privacy. Then I added a piece around employee privacy. Um, and we have here also first days recommended. So maybe I want to create another subcategory and we'll call this um, health practice practices. There we go. I'm going to save that. It's going to add that. Then I want to go ahead and from here, uh, add a new playlist to this subcategory. And I can call that um, hygiene. <laughs> hygiene 101. It would help if I spelled right. There we go. And we can give a description, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do that. Leave it under that uh, getting started subcategory. Under here, uh, there is no technology involved, so we're going to leave that blank. This is a level beginner, and my audience is all. Now, that's going to go by classifications. We, it could have been nurses, right? So from here, I can then add or search for existing assets. But what we need to do first is let's make sure. Oh, we do need to give a description. And let's say it's keep it clean because we're talking about hygiene. There we go. Save. There we've gone. All right. So now we have that. So now we can go ahead and we can search for existing assets. Um, so we don't have anything showing there. So we're going to create an asset and I can give it a URL uh, awaiting the title, right? We can do that here. Um, so let's look at. Oh, that's learning pathways. Open a new tab. And let's go under. Site contents to where our pages are and site pages. Here we go. And where's like that health MDT? MDT 101. Here we go. Is that the one we just created today? Yes. So we've got this particular page. So it's awaiting a title. Um, I selected enter a URL. Whoops. I want to actually enter that here. And the title will call it MDT 101, even though this isn't hygiene. 
don't know why I typed that to begin with. Okay, go ahead. The category is getting started, right? And again, we can create other categories. Um, Subcategory, it already picked up the healthcare. Levels beginner, audience is all. Save the asset. There we go, it's now been saved. So now for our users, we come on back here, click Microsoft 365 training. I did it under there under <laughs> getting started. You're gonna to wanna to do it different, but there we have health practices. Here's our hygiene 101 and there it is right in line, right? So it's all finished for us. So we're able to take all that and drop it in. Simple, easy peasy. I have one last thing. I know we're up at the hour. I just want to quick check to see if we have any questions. So I am looking and there's none yet. Okay, good. Oh, well, we've had ones, but uh, there we go. So we've seen all that. The last thing I wanted to show you, I said was leveraging external content. So it's going to run a little more in an hour, about two minutes and we're done. So let's say we have a form. So let's go back here to forms and I'm gonna create a quiz and I'm gonna call this the steps to better nursing. And maybe there is a bunch of industry practice videos out there on YouTube that I wanna leverage here. And to better sing, no, to better nursing. All right. And so what I could do is I can come in here and for each one of these, maybe I wanna quiz them or survey them as things go. So I'm gonna say, um, what did, oh, was this pertinent to uh, your job? Thank goodness for spell check. Works even in the browser, there we go, yes. No, and so I can go ahead and start creating this. But what I wanna do is for this particular piece, we want to add a media element, right? So, and you'll see that as we do this, each one of these, here's this question, we can go ahead and we can say, I want an image or video, I can do either. So I'm gonna select video, and just paste a URL, a uh, YouTube URL. I'm just gonna grab one. This is a great piece on Microsoft Teams and Governance uh, and Change Management that Caruana Gatimu had done for us. And so we'll grab that video. It could be, it would be on nursing or whatever the case might be. But if I come back here and I paste my URL, click add. Notice what it does now. It's put it right in line. And I can do this for every um, particular question that we want as we put those on. And so let's grab an, another video. So we could go, oh, I don't know, let's say um, this one here. It's another one that we did, driving communications, engagement. And so we're gonna come on back again to our forms. And for this one, paste this URL, boom. Now this only works today with YouTube, not with stream. I don't know why. So that's a request, go to, uh, you know, where you can uh, post your comments and stuff for the product teams. Um, I'm certainly going to suggest that it should be stream and YouTube and possibly just any video source. But today for external sources, if you want to create a quiz with a bunch of inline videos so they go through and watch publicly available ones on YouTube, you can do that. Um, again, if you have suggestions, user voice for Microsoft Forms, great place to go. I'll put a, a link to that as well if you have suggestions for any of this. So. Um, we've gone through all of our steps. Let me come on back here. I think we're at the tail end of our, right? We've created each one of these right down to the videos and forms. So what have we done? We've shown integrating videos and forms together 
We've pulled them together. We've put them into learning pathways. We've pulled them into teams where people work. So what are some of the next steps that you might want to consider? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, number one, as we, as we think about this, you might want to create some samples of your own. Try it out. Look, this is easy to play around with, right? If you, if you own Office 365, I haven't shown you anything that you don't own that you can't play around with in a little sandbox and do. You can go ahead, you can create videos and post them to stream. You can have them be private so nobody sees them, right? So you can create those. You can create forms and you can drop them directly into videos, see how it's working. You can create web pages and combine forms and videos. Maybe you might also drop in a PDF with you know ancillary content and resources. You can do all that. A web page allows you to pull together a whole wealth of stuff, including the videos and forms and other content that you can drop into a one-stop shop for a very rich environment. Then play around pulling it into Teams, right? How do you want to do that? Maybe you create a page that's navigation to a, it's just links to a number of trainings you want them to do, and each one of those trainings is one of those pages. Or maybe you're going to drop in a video directly, or maybe you're going to create a channel of videos with uh, quizzes uh, or surveys directly in those videos. There's so many possibilities. When you're done with all of that, as you actually engage your users and deploy this, you can then start to go ahead and report on that. You saw how we get dashboard views of it. As people go dynamically, we can see that. So you can even see that in a live event, be pulling up the dashboard, point people to say, okay, look at question three, the following. I'd like your feedback based on what I've been saying. Boom, and you'll see immediate results. You're gonna get it right then and there, a dashboard view. If you even wanted to, you could put the response view also on that page uh, as a web part. So a lot of options, right? So play around with it. Then work with your corporate communications and training folks to implement in your real environment some great things. Finally, there is a lot of ways you can go with this. Your folks at Microsoft, folks like myself, we've been doing this for a while. So engage your account team, talk to them about getting folks like myself from your account team, <coughs> excuse me, about getting your technology specialists in to talk to you about leveraging stream and forms and in conjunction with Microsoft Teams with for templatizing a team, create a team template with something like we saw with, uh, if you were on my webcast I did as a guest with AdPoint, you saw how they could templatize teams and spit them out um, with a whole uh, workflow around that. Or you maybe you're gonna build those templates yourself, but maybe you create pre-done templates that automatically call in training with that ability to knowledge check and have that in there. But folks like myself, t technology uh, specialists, we can help you. We'd love to help you. Talk to your account team, get us in. And then you can either get in, you know, there that way, or maybe even a deeper engagement with an MTC. But there's a ton that can be done. Finally, go to aka.ms slash HLS blog, right? Go to that URL. I will have later today this recording with all the uh, um, resources from today. I have a step-by-step -step guide. It'll be published along with the video itself, but also on the blog, Ask us questions around uh, different implementations. If you're having a concern or how to do something, ask. That's the place. If you want additional webcasts around particular content, I think I'm going to start making all mine an hour and a half. An hour is just too short. Um, but uh, if you have uh, thoughts and ideas, things you'd like for webcasts, for on-demand content that we just published, that's the place to engage us. That's the place to see myself and my colleagues who are publishing, like Shelly Avery, who posed a great thing on getting started with Teams today. Um, you can take a look there and that's where you can engage with us. We wanna help you. We wanna provide value to, to you, our customers, our partners. Um, hey, if you're just interested in your friends and family and wanna know about 365, this is the place to go. So go to our HLS blog, 
uh, you know, we are healthcare focused in our daily work, and I do reference it, you know, frequently, as you can see with nurses, et cetera. But most of the content you'll see when it comes to collaboration spans many industries. So don't think that that should be something to keep you away. But with that, take one last look on my Twitter. We had some questions earlier. For those who went on, uh, I want to thank you uh, for doing it. Um, my mistake, next time that will be corrected. And I just want to thank you again for tuning in today. With that, this is Mike Giannotti bidding you have a great day. Try this stuff out. It's easy and you own it. If you don't, go and set up a demo tenant. It's quick and it won't take and you get 30 days to play with it. But with that, Mike Giannotti, have a great day. Take care and as always, ciao.